Yo, what is up, headhunters, executive recruiters, search firm owners, and all of the rest? This is David Stephen Patterson here, uh, back with our very first episode of the Headhunters Live. And we are here with Chris Wessel and Nick and uh, Neil Levivis. I almost called you Nick, Neil. Sorry about that. Nick. Uh, anyway, guys, say hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, everybody. Remember hey, on The Simpsons? Hi, everybody. Hi, Dr. Nick. Anyone? No. Okay. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. I, I, I've That's seen like school. every episode. That wow. is old school. Well, guys, um, uh, so to give you some guys some, some context here, uh, for obvious who are maybe new to our world, uh, back in 2020 during the big COVID lockdowns, uh, Neil and I started a show called Headhunters and Boxers Talking Smack. Uh, we were loud, irreverent. We brought on tons of great guests like Danny Cahill, Mike Gianta, David Perry, and a ton of others. Uh, we've been on hiatus for the last year and a half. I uh, always have people ask, when are you guys coming back? And we decided to come back, but we decided to do it with a fresh new look, fresh new name, a little more polished, still having that irreverence. And we've added our uh, very new co-host, again, Chris Russell, who has a wealth of recruiting experience. And so we're going to be broadcasting live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and we'll have either a, a great guest, either uh, like a celebrity recruiter slash trainer or – uh, one of you guys grinding it out every single day, making it happen. All right. Um, or and if we don't have a guest, we'll have a great training topic for you. Okay. So either way, you're going to get a ton of value out of this and hopefully a few laughs. So today we are going to be talking about the recession. All right. How to handle the recession. We're just going to have our own takes on it. But before I get what into recession? that, I want to introduce the these folks here and let's, let's talk about that. So Chris, my friend. So, yes. Talk to me. Did, Talk to me, Goose. So, hey, so uh, the way I got on this show is I told them I knew a lot about recruiting and they found me attractive and here I am. But uh, turns out I don't know anything about it. I just heard of Googled recruiting the other day um, and I'm going to do it on the fly. So, so I've been doing this for about, I tell, I'm a dad now, so I tell terrible jokes. So that's just going to be a thing. Uh, been recruiting for almost 20 years. Uh, I owned a couple firms the last 15 of those years. About 10 of that was a technology staffing firm. The last three-ish years have been mostly focused on hiring for leadership positions. So like you, most of you watching this, um, you know, every day in the trenches, solo firm with, with a little bit of admin support. Uh, so my perspective on a lot of things is going to be kind of in the trenches. Uh, in my spare time, uh, I do some process consulting for some clients. I do some coaching and training or recruiters for, for some organizations. I'm a partner in a virtual assistant business. Uh, I teach some management classes, a couple classes at University of Albany up here in Albany, New York. Uh, and professor. I also have, yeah, that's, that's where you got that name. <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, perhaps most importantly, uh, my biggest project is uh, I have a almost four-year-old uh, right here. And, uh, you know, and I have a fantastic and supportive wife that allows me to to have this kind of business so that's me in a nutshell not only that chris but you have a supportive wife that allows this man cave that you're in which is not a zoom background it's your real man cave right like that story right that she said, oh, yeah you? that's some that's some bull ish right bull -ish. all his marriage stuff. i don't have that yeah right. so yeah because we uh you know we had um the, the the firm I owned before for about 10 years, we we owned the building we were in for several of those years. And so when we sold that, which is right around, right around, you know, the worst part of COVID. So I was lucky to even sell the building. Um, I was looking for a space because I was transitioning to solo practice and I'm looking at different office buildings, co-working spaces, and I do get some mail to co-working space. But my, you know, my wife pointed out, you know, listen, you had a building for years where you were smoking cigars in upstairs with with clients. You had, you know, a pool table. You had a hockey, air hockey. You had all that stuff. Like, you're not gonna be able to get that in any of these offices. And I'm like, no. She's like, so why don't you take one of the apartments in one of the the rental properties that you have and just make that your office? So this you is know how many my women are cringing right now out there watching this. There's no way. I said, don't lose her. This she is knows the exact opposite of what every wife does, right? <laughs> but it does effectively keep all of my stuff out of our primary residence, which is probably you know better. But she does have a key and she knows where it is, so that's super. There you important. go. There you go. Uh, well, I was yeah, this is this about Chris. Um, this is my bat cave. <laughs> yep. 
Well, Chris is the moderator of the Ursa group. You've seen him in there. And uh, I was exposed to Chris just by being Chris. Chris has no agenda on here. Chris isn't selling or ever peddling or plugging anything. He doesn't. Are you saying that we have an agenda, Neil? Yes. Well, you know what? Of course we do. We we, we, we 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 both do it to keep ourselves visible. And there is a, you know, I sell back office services and that. And it's what I do. And it's part of why I do the show. And you peddle your stuff uh, <laughs> shamelessly um, and that's okay um, but well, so Neil. Chris doesn't have any agenda and and what's well, great is he provides great insight and mm -hmm. and so much value to people and I saw him in all the groups and I and and just a couple of years ago I said listen how would you like to moderate the group you're so valuable and anyway so uh, and we just felt it would be great in the trenches perspective of someone that has so many great things to offer. So I'm thrilled to have Chris join us. All right. So yeah, I want to plus, but plus uh, somebody who's actually in the recruiting field right now, actively recruiting because Neil isn't do isn't actually recruiting anymore. I uh, stopped actually recruiting a couple of years ago. So it's great to have somebody who's in the field right now uh, in the trenches, muddy, dirty, bloodied, and still fighting to live or living to fight another day, as they say. Uh, so great to have you here, Chris. Um, so that's the professor. And of course, um, we have uh, that right down there below. We have the boss, uh, the owner of Back Office Staffing Solutions. By the way, for all of you who uh, watched the show a couple years ago, you'll notice that Neil is looking trim. He's looking fit. He's looking, dare I say, a little bit, uh, you know, attractive. Uh, well, but, and uh, we got a glimpse of that. We got a glimpse of that, but that that is actually that is a subscribers only uh, version oh, of the show. Stop. That, stop. Uh, That's right. Neil also has the OnlyFans, by the way. Oh, Neil also has the OnlyFans. Um, and and by the way, by the way, for anybody here who wants to see Neil's OnlyFans <laughs> comment, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You. Don't do that. Don't do that. But what you guys can do, show us some love. If you guys can hear us, uh, let us know in the comments. Give us some uh, some likes, some hearts, some emojis. Get, make, make them angry emojis. We don't care. We just need your emotion because it drives the algorithm. So help other people see this show. If the show is a success, then we will keep doing it. And we're going to keep coming to your life every single week. But Neil, tell us over the last couple of years, since you've been live on this show, what has been new in your world? What's been new in my world? Um, well, yeah. goodness. I mean, we did launch three years ago. This is, I, guess, I don't mean to be a plug, but back office staffing solutions. I, I was a trainer and a, and a big name in the industry and doing that. I've got out of that and uh, it's been an amazing ride. It brings me here to Manhattan. So this is a, a real background. I love it here. I, I lived here before my, I got married way back when. Um, so that's my story. I wanted to, um, you wanted me to share my background. I, I, I know we mentioned beforehand with people who, who don't know me. Um, I'm a long-term executive in, in the staffing and recruiting world. I'm a CPA, Ernst & Young guy. I went to Robert Half. I'm that guy and was on the perm side. A big theme you'll hear from me is I was taught really early on, Neil, if you want to get the monies in the temp, the monies in the contract, the monies in the full business. I was a myopic search guy, okay? And a lot of you out there are, uh, and a lot aren't. But I, but I, that was in my whole blood, and, and I eventually... Um, got promoted, became a division perm manager, all that. I made the leap to become a branch manager to learn the temp side, take a, a step back, lose money, you know, really. But I did it. And uh, I, long story short, I left Robert Half, joined a company that was called Accountants on Call, uh, was a company that became Agilon Modus, uh, bought by a deco. And I became president, COO, ultimately. Uh, $30 million company when I started. I became president at about $300 million, So I saw a tremendous growth. Uh, before that, and then it became a billion dollar company and I became global president for Deco. Uh, a wonderful experience, professional staffing and, and lots of different areas. I then became a trainer for 10 years. That's where most of you, you know, who know me, um, you know, I started doing all this, the sectors and uh, I became a trainer and, and um, loved it. And then I came across David. Uh, that'll be a story we're going to, I'm going to turn it to David in a second because David's the host really and, and uh I don't want you to be shy about yourself, but so I did that and I did that for 10 amazing years. And then the back office business came around. That's my background. Hey, David, just, I want to segue to you because people in my group don't all know you. And, and, um, uh, David, I came to David years ago, a couple of years ago, um, to ask him to do me a favor and that I'm, I'm starting this back office business. I want to really make a Facebook group. I, I provide a lot of value. I can provide a lot of value to your group. But I'm not going to lie, I have a competing group, but I'm not looking to. And it, he was so 
amazing and graceful. And what happened was we had the best phone call. Like not only did he take it, but we had the best call and we had so much fun. And we're like, we got to, this would be a great, it was like Seinfeld, right? We're like, this is a show. I'm like, this is a show. And anyway, David was gracious enough. The rest is history. And so David, uh, people know you from your group. Why don't you tell everyone that doesn't know you about you? Well, I am not just a rugged yet uh, handsome face. Uh, I am the owner and operator of the Digital Headhunter. So given my background, I'll be pretty quick for those folks who um, have short attention spans. Basically, uh, I started in the Stanford World back in 97. actually started recruiting day labor, if you can believe it. Uh, I was running labor halls showing up in the office like 5 a.m. in the morning and putting out uh, uh, homeless guys on a construction site. So that was my introduction to staffing, got into executive search in 2000, uh, started my own firm in 2004 in the, on the SAP side, large-scale IT systems. And then about six, uh, seven years ago, uh, six years ago, started doing the training coaching thing, got burnt out on recruiting, loved it, uh, but just wanted to grow and do something new. And it uh, turns out I found my passion. I, I it turned out I had a knack at marketing, a knack at, on, at training and coaching. Definitely do it a little bit of, of a different way. I'm very much, um, very, very much not a suit and tie wearing, uh, speak at a conference kind of trainer. Uh, very much polarizing. Some people love me, some people hate me, not much in between. And that's kind of the way I like it. But the, the systems that we build, uh, we build some of the most ruthlessly effective uh, sales and marketing systems in the known universe. Yeah. So, and, with that being and, said, and uh, being if, said if we, David, we're not broadcasting to my group, are we? Uh, we should be. We're, we're broadcasting to all the groups. So, can you just check first so we can make sure? And maybe because uh, I'm getting all sorts of panicked people. Gotcha. Okay. I'll go. I'll go. There won't, won't be much I can do about it right now because we're actually live. So if anybody wants to show, just go to the, the Herc, the head and executive recruiter community. Uh, Trix, who is on, he's my assistant. She's on the call. Um, Trix, just go make sure anybody who joins in the next few minutes, make sure you add them ASAP if you could. Um, well, so could you also please go to the Ursa group, make an announcement, refer her to your group and for her so we don't get a lot of frustrated people. Gotcha, tricks. If you can go do that, I said I won't be. I won't be able to do it on the on the live call myself. So if you guys can can do that while I'm talking, that'd be fantastic. Um, anyway, but that that being said, that's a bit about me. I want to get into any uh, any further details on myself. But if you want to learn more, uh, go to the digitaleditor.com. Although my, our site is being uh, right now be worked on, so it is uh, you'll it'll have like a coming soon thing there. Um, you can also go to the head and executive recruiter community on Facebook, one of the largest recruiting communities on there. Anyway. With that said, guys, can we confirm, Chris? Is it is it broadcasting on your end from my group? Um, or no? I'm looking. I uh, don't see it in the. No, David. We we. All right, never mind. We'll figure it out later. Yeah, we, we we'll, at, at, at the end of the day, this is this is our, our first show, so we're gonna have a little. I know. I'm really here. sorry for those of you guys watching this. I know we sent like fifty thousand emails. I mm -hmm. see this stuff coming in. I'm really sorry. We'll get it settled for everyone out there when you're watching at this. The, the, really the, the best. The best thing to do is take take the link for the live from the Herc and just put put it into into the group. That that's probably the best yeah. best thing to do for the for the for the the time being. So we can get so we can uh, keep moving on with the show. Yep. All right, guys. So with that said, today we're gonna be talking about uh, recession, specifically how to survive a recession. Because right now everybody's talking about um, uh, job orders are drying up, clients aren't hiring. Uh, now, granted, they still are hiring. Uh, many of them aren't using recruiters, though, because they're looking to cut fees. There's plenty of business out there, certainly is, but there's, but at the same time, there's also a glut of recruiters who, in the last few years, they spent their time working on the easy-to-get positions, but now they don't have those, and so everybody's hitting the market at the same time. So, Kind of creates a little bit of a weird situation, and so uh, I wanted. I thought it'd be a great idea for this first show is have everybody give their own perspective on how they can uh, tackle their this recession. So you're not one of the recruiters flushed out, you know, when we when we come roaring back, and so you can actually set yourself up for massive success. So, with that note, uh, Chris, I think you're up. Chris, let us tell us what. Um, um, given that you're in the saddle right now, you're in the trenches. Um, Somebody who is getting a bit worried over, about the you know coming what we have coming up right, uh, especially in some of the sectors that are kind of hit hard like tech is one. Uh, give us your perspective. Like what 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 would be your best advice for these folks? Sure. Um, and just real quick, uh, Neil, I dropped the link. 
for the live into independent recruiters and staff. Oh, I'm, I'm uh, a, oh, you just did now. Do I need just to as just as David was introducing me? I start. I think I did the everyone tag, but I don't know if just from the copying and pasting, it, it may or may not have worked. So while I'm chatting, Neil, if you could go in there and just okay, make sure. Absolutely. Because I figured right I dropped the link in there, but I want to make sure everybody gets notified. Yep. So yep, actually, I see it yeah. too. I see, I see it in there. So we are good to go. Awesome. Okay, good, cool. Man. Awesome. Just wanted a little, little bit of maintenance as we're all building the ship as we're flying it here. So yep, that's right. uh, we're due, we do double duty as, as hosts and, and crew for the most part. <laughs> you said duty. Yeah, <laughs> that's, if that'll, hopefully that'll be the worst thing I say, but probably not. So, um, by it's the way, I don't know if you It's actually cool. The link actually shows the live stream even in the link, which is really it, cool. Yeah, it looked like that. So that's pretty neat. So that's now you can cool. open that and you can see a couple All right. of like. Come on, like crisis Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, you. on to the next crisis. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Also, just real quick, I don't know if everyone noticed that we all got haircuts for this. So I don't, don't expect that to be the norm. But, you know, we're well, let's also we're not about. compare. Let's call it what it is. Right. Chris is the good looking, pretty boy. You're beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Chris is that guy. David Z, the, the, the rugged, studly, kick your butt kind of guy. I'm the, I'm the New York Jew. You know, I, I, that's just my role. I'm not going to compete with my hair. I'm bald. I, so let's just call what it is and let's stop on the physical right now. That is, that is I got All nothing. Right. To I love it. Love it. So on to something substantive, I suppose, for at least a couple of minutes. Right. So yeah, um, yeah. one of the things we're trying to do on a, on a weekly basis is take a look at, at what people are posting about, because if that's what you're talking about, that's what's on your mind. And in the, the this theme of, you know, being a down time for a lot of recruiters and some of them aren't sure kind of, you know, what route to go to either get more clients or they're just, it's, it's even harder to, to pull people uh, candidate wise. One of the things that's been popping up a lot along that lines is people looking to do splits, people looking for splits, people looking to work together. Hey, uh, you know, the common themes were in some cases, some people said, Hey, I got a lot of job orders. I need some help. People chime in say, I'm interested other times you know, hey, I have this kind of background. If anybody needs help on something, let me know. So I thought it would be a good time to kind of just touch on like best practices for effective splits, because anyone who's ever tried them, I think, uh, has experienced that they can go anywhere from wildly profitable to horribly wrong. And you know, built some great relationships that way and did some relationships that way. You know, I know Neil actually had a split board at one point, so we'll want to touch on that from a big picture perspective. But, you know, just on a high level, those of you who might just so using terminology that everyone understands in case you're new to it, a split is essentially where, you know, it's kind of like real estate. One of you, have, one of you has the house, one of you has the buyer, right? So typically in a split, you've got a 50-50, you know, someone has a client, someone has a candidate, uh, or, you know, someone has given someone a job order to work on, et cetera. So the upsides, uh, if you're not as strong on the business development front personally, or if you are just hurting right now because the usual, you know, ponds that you're fishing in aren't producing, it can be good for, you know, supplementing, you know, the, your job order flow. Um, and it, on the flip side, if you have a ton of work coming your way and you want to be able to satisfy these clients and make sure that, that you're able to fulfill these needs so that these orders keep coming, which is the other problem to have, you know, this is a way to help handle some of that volume. Uh, um, some of the downsides are, you know, when you add a layer in any situation, you have less control over client relationship, candidate relationship, whichever side you're on. Um, and I think probably one of the biggest potentials for a downside is we all have our own way of doing things, right? We're all experts, especially the solo ones, especially the independent ones, especially anyone who's had any measure of success and has been doing this for a little while. Like we all, you can see in the comments week after week, we all know the right answer, right? And and all of us are more or less right. So, um, you know, while there are, sometimes these come together by way of a couple people bumping into each other on a board, like one of the Facebook groups we manage, or maybe they come together on like a platform like Top Echelon or something like that. Um, but where really, where the rubber meets the road is, you know, how that relationship is outlined and how it's managed in order for it to be successful. So I'm just going to cover a couple of quick points and then, you know, these guys will chime in, but so it doesn't happen magically, right? Like every now and then, I guess it does, you know, you blind squirrel finds a nut now and then type of deal. But first you got to develop a relationship. 
you know, you can't do this blind through like a, a platform. And even the people who run a site, like some of the some of the better boards, uh, they'll even tell you that, like, you, you can't just chuck resumes into a, a platform and, and stuff will happen. So you got to build a relationship. You got to understand how, how each other works. You know, have you ever talked to a, another recruiter and thought, wow, this guy or girl thinks just like me, works just like me. We're, we, you know, we totally get each other. Like, no, yeah, that's, that's good. Every now and then you do. Some of them are like, what is wrong with this fucking guy? So, <laughs> so, but we have different do you, styles. Do you or do you look at people as such a handsome specimen and feel that they're all beneath you with your Aryan, gorgeous, blonde boy? Oh my God. All right. So what how happens? are we making this? Racial. <laughs> Oh, this Neil, is, it's, not really, not, it's not a good path to go down. This is, this is going. In, this is going in a dark place. So. These are bad things. What it's we need to do dark. is put it's we need to put Neil on a time delay, and we just kind of like you know mute him, and he's down here like oh, right, like when here. Richard Pryor. Remember that he was like on Saturday Night Live it was a big deal, and and he, they delayed him like seven seconds. It was a big thing. Oh, I remember that. Well, I don't remember yeah. that. I was young, but I, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. reading really about thing. that. We need at least yeah. a seven second delay. So like a couple of things to think about when you're laying these out, like let's say, and you understand, you get a sense of, of each other, how each other works, you know, expectations are big. This is just like in a client relationship, right? So, you know, you have to understand the process and you have to have a clear agreement, right? And not just an agreement in terms of how you're going to, that you're going to get paid, but like, so if you're the recruiter, you got to understand the relationship that this person has with their client. Are they exclusive? Like, are they, are they just, you know, you have to know that are they exclusive? Who are they working with? All the things that you would want to know if you personally were qualifying a requirement, you need to, you can't take any of these things for granted. If someone's like, hey, I got a bunch of open jobs and you're like, oh, I'll help you on that. And then, you know, it doesn't go anywhere. It might be because you didn't ask some of those questions and understand what the landscape was. Um, same thing if you go to a client and you just take a job order at, at face value and you don't ask many questions like, are you, are you looking for someone? Have you called this out to other firms? It's the same thing, right? So, and if you're the salesperson, like, what do you expect from the recruiter? And if you by that, I mean, you're the person who has the, the, the job. What do you expect from them? What do you, like, are you just looking for someone to just get your resume and you'll take it from there? Are you looking for someone to fully manage the candidate from start to finish, including like delivering the offer? Are you, you know, th th there's all these different layers. It's not, and people have different expectations when they're like, hey, I want to do a split with you because we all work differently. And because we all have a different idea of where the handoffs are, are like you need to talk about these things right so you know if you have like uh, you also want to you also want to understand by the way payment terms of the end client uh and, and be on the same page there and that should definitely be a guarantee term too. Yeah, yeah so payment terms and guarantee terms that's that's a, that's a big deal because a lot of times when you do a split and it just some of the ones that come together by happen it's one thing if you give somebody a job to work on and they, they find you some candidates they, they work it fully but sometimes Splits come about by like, hey, I got somebody. Hey, I got an opening. Boom. If you end up having to backfill that, like you're, you get lightning needs to strike twice. So you just got to know what you're getting into there. So if that that's like a money back guarantee that you're looking at, you you just want to know these things ahead of time. Um, the transparency and trust is a big deal. So I don't care what anybody says. The recruiter has got to know who the client is. This bullshit where you see people that are just like, oh, they're all cagey about who the client, who, how is a recruiter going to effectively hire for you and find you candidates if they don't know, if you can't tell them who the company is that you're well, working with? Well, there's no trust. That, well, I'll get into this it. This is what I'm saying. Well, and, and so I'm almost done. And you can jump in there. Like, there's got to be trust. There's got to be transparency. You're on the same team. I've been in situations where I've been, we've been on discovery calls together and I've been on both sides of it. You know, ostensibly, you're the same team. You know, if I have a recruiter helping me, I might tell the, the client, hey, this is, you know, one of my team members or whatever, because you don't want to confuse things. But anyway, besides the trust thing, we can dive into that a bit. But I think my last point that I really want to cover, if you give someone a job to work on, don't work on it too. Like, or like, if you know what I'm saying, like that would, that's, that's not in good faith, right? If you, if you're going to have some, if you're going to have a job and you're going to hand it off to this person who's hungry and they're trying to work, they're trying to help you out, but you're also working it. That's, that's not cool. Like it's not going to be effective. You're not going to build trust that way. Like if you have overflow, say, Hey, listen, I have all these jobs I'm working on. 
you know, set, set the tone. Set on the same note, you're discounting your fee 50% if you're going to end up doing the same work. Then it's a stupid model, too. You know what I mean? Like, then why are you yeah. splitting the begin with, right? So I agree. Right. Totally. And, anyway, so that's my initial rant. So yeah, I don't know if you guys want to chime in at all on that. Yeah, actually, I've, I've got a thought on that. So so one thing that I think is really important as well, and in, 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 in the context of working splits, um, think about this, right? So one of the hardest uh, hardest things in this in this in this business, um, which is which is why I started training and coaching this, uh, is why I don't train how to prep candidates. That's not my thing, right? I, I train people on how to get clients, and that's the hardest part of the business is getting the client. And uh, and I will say, or at least for for most niches, it's, it's one of the hardest. Um, all the uh, everything else being equal. So if you already have a contract with a company, let's say you're an IT recruiter and you have a contract with a company or you're at an agreement, you know, and you see they also have normal positions that you normally would pass on. There, there's an accounting position. Go, go develop a relationship with an accounting recruiter and develop a partnership. You take the IT roles they have with, with, with their clients, with their contracts. And because if it's a position that you wouldn't have worked anyway. For one, you're servicing the client better, and yep. and in a recession, clients are gold. You got to treat your clients like gold. You got to roll the red carpet for them. Do everything you possibly can to make sure they're happy, right? And it services the client better. Uh, and uh, you're you're uh, hopefully you're, you're you're banging out deals or these partial deals that you wouldn't have uh, have have gotten otherwise. And you're keeping yourself busy. You're keeping your partners busy, and they're feeding you job orders as well. So so take the opportunity if you already have the agreement in place. Start developing those relationships so you can start working those other job boards that you wouldn't normally take. That's that's my my perspective on it. But what about you, Neil? What do you think? What do you think? Of- well, so I think as a rule, I'm going to be provocative. Split boards and stuff don't work. Okay, I, they're fraught with problems, and I and I can say there's that you make some placements. So I don't think they do. They the are, two yeah. best out there, NPA and Top Echelon, right? Mm-hmm. The answer, David, in my opinion, is what you talked about. And just expand on that is, is you have to find a, a somebody. It's all about what Chris said. It's about the trust. It's either when you're in a company, it makes good sense. And even there, you see people you don't trust. And when things go awry, you need to have trust. And then it will make sense. Find a split partner in this group or wherever. Research them. Find them. Interview them. Talk, hey, I love your background. You're, you're from here. We have similar. Let's talk. What do you think about this? And yeah, you're going to have to share who the company is. You're going to have to have someone where there's a candidate and it was mine. You're going to trust each other. Then it's amazing. Then the whole is much greater than the sum of the parts. The problem with splits, okay, to, to end my, is that people think that, oh, I'd rather have half of something than nothing of a whole. And that's not true all the time at all. It's not what because if you do Chris's point, if you're going to do all the work and then screw another recruiter, maybe, or you're going to have like, oh, let me see what they're going to do. Let's say if not, you're still going to do all the work. And you're going to get a $30,000 fee. Now you're going to give up. Now you're only making 15 grand. Now, is that recruiter doing all the work? Are they doing half the work? Probably not. Are they able to prep that person the same, do all those things? Or you're going to take it over now. Now you're overpaying. Now you're going to make 15 grand on that deal. If you were to negotiate a $15,000 fee up front from that client, said, listen, I owe 30 grand, but I want to only pay you 15. If they, you tell them to take a hike. So my point is what both you said. And I'm not a fan of the split boards. It's so, and I think you're both and, saying the same. And I think one of the reasons that, like, I know I was personally on top echelon for a little while. Um, and I know that the people who run that, I believe NPA is the same way. Those guys drive home, like, the, the, the best practices and say, like, listen, if you want to do deals together, you got to get to know each other. They have conferences. They, like, I'm not trying to make it yeah. commercial for them. I'm just saying it is going about it the right way. What, what, you know, what I just, a lot of times I see, and I lived through a lot of these mistakes myself over the years. And, and like, I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, you just got to qualify it. Like you would qualify a job order. And, exactly. and a lot of us are not good at doing that. Right. So a lot of times when stuff blows up in our face and we learn the hard way that we didn't ask the right questions going into a client engagement, or you're going to make the cowboys, you know, we're, we're cowboys. And so how, yeah. so some yeah. of your recruiters just go in and you know, they, they don't do the qualification piece of it. Uh, yeah. But, but, you know, I, th- I think the, I think the, uh, you know, split boards were great back before, you know, the Facebook, we had this community. I, mean, I remember when I was, uh, yeah. uh, you know, back in like uh, 10 years ago, I felt like on, on an Island, 
I, I didn't know any other, I wasn't friends with any other search firms except people I met at conferences here and there, maybe once a year, twice a year, if I was lucky. Now you've got a place like, you know, the Herc, your know, Facebook group, you got uh, uh, you know, your Facebook group, you know, Ursa, and so many other groups where you can build those relationships. And if someone's the shitty, excuse my French, but shitty uh, uh, split partner, find a new one. There's a lot of them out there that are great to work with. And right. I think the utility of split boards is, is kind of falling off because now we can build these outside. There are other ways to connect and build those relationships. Yeah. Sorry. And they're oh, not 100%. split partners, right? What, how does it normally work by people watching this, right? You get a quick, Hey, can you help me on a split? Yeah, there you go. Here's a split. Uh, that's a split partner. That's a, That's a, let me get a quick way, low hanging fruit, maybe make a, a buck. Hey, I bet we just had Michael J. Michael G. Cox here. Uh, just commented the uh, only splits he's ever done that have worked have been done with good friends, recruiters that I trust completely. There you go. And uh, I, I bet you, Michael, you probably met some of those in the Herc, or at least one of our one of our groups, one of our groups. Well, uh, well, that said, I want to get into into my next topic here, and I want to give you my, my perspective on uh, on what to do during a recession. Uh, to yeah, but wait, wait, I just want to say this. I'm, I'm going to come oh, yeah. back to this. what recession. There is none. I'm going to talk about that. It's slowed down. No, but I, I, cause, cause we're going to come into that. There's talk about, there's no recession. All right. Now there's, we'll talk about some of the posts. We'll get into it, but I, I just want to say that because I cut you off a couple of times. Don't you say that word. So I know people are going to be out there saying, what are you talking about? What recession? Well, at well, a minimum, you know, yeah. to prepare for maybe one. Cause there's a slowdown. Sure. But there isn't a recession. To be fair, to be fair though. Is. I guess it depends on the niche, but by the end of the day, like I forget the quote. I think it was uh, Harry Truman that said this, but what is it? It's a, it's a it's a recession when when your neighbor loses their job. It's a depression when you lose yours. I think is, is what I forget the exact line it is, but I, and I believe it's Truman who said that. I, I think or it might have been FDR. Whatever. Anyway, but my point is, sure, uh, uh, it depends. It's semantics, right? Uh, has there been a slowdown? Yes, job borders have fall, have uh, some sense have fallen off the cliff. Not not every niche. But it is a. But at the end of the day, as well, what you don't want to be is recruiter, recruiter by the way, your head in the sand. Similarly, Sorry and and, and then and then you got a, a rude awakening, you know, in a few months. And so whether you call it a recession, depression, slowdown, whatever it is, at the end of the day, it's a slowdown, and you need to like change the way you approach the market. Hundred percent. Accordingly, that's why I look at it. But look at it. But uh, but that said, all right. So um, uh, so I'll keep saying recession, but we'll we'll call it a. Uh, we will call since we're all bros here on the call. We'll call it a bro session. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Bro session. So I uh, like bro so session. How you actually? Okay, I like bro session. Uh, so how you should how you should approach this bro session? Um, what should you do to to um, to set yourself for success? And so one of the things that uh, I've I've been a big proponent of. In fact, uh, Michael G. Cox, who just commented here earlier, I think can probably comment on this as well. I know he employs this technique, and that is the leadership call. It is one of the most effective techniques for getting on the phone with prospects because mm -hmm. when I first started with management recruiters back in 2000, um, uh, when I first learned search after doing after doing that the labor staffing thing, um, uh, uh, I was told right by all all the trainers out there, the Danny Cahills and the, and the, and, the, and the, uh, Tony Burns and everybody else in MRI training, they all said that four hours of phone time is the gold standard. And so we worked at in a search firm. They used to track how much phone time you had. Needs to yeah. clock it, and it's basically four. If you do four hours every single day, you're going to make six figures. At least back when six figures meant something. So, so, uh, and a large, large part of that was not just talking to people who are hiring or people who are looking, but talking to decision makers and building relationships. Because back then, I think uh, uh, recruiters looked at the business uh, in much more of a relationship manner. Than they do nowadays, where a lot of times it's it's, it's wham bam, thank you, man, sort of, you know, uh, uh, looking for those easy, quick wins, the low hanging fruit. So if you want to really build a successful practice and build real strong relationships, uh, it is imperative that you use this opportunity to get on the phone with with decision makers and prospects and start earning their trust. I think it was Zig Ziglar who said, um, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, I had to go. I think it was some of the effect of people may like you. But they'll only buy from you if they trust you. I'm, I know I'm butchering the line. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but something along those lines. So one of the best ways to build trust is to be of value to those those decision makers who may not be hiring right now, but if they're if but likely will be in six months or a year or, or even longer. So how do you do that? So uh, I'm sure many of you guys have heard of the flip call, 
right? It's a standard mm -hmm. in our business, right? If the, the standard flip call, the way it's been trained, at least I've seen it, seen it taught this way, which I, I don't like, is you find a position online, pretend it's yours, call the decision maker. And during the call, of course, the person gets on the phone with you because you've got a job in hand, right? As opposed to trying to sell a service, you know, it isn't your job, but you lie about it. And then in the call, you say, they disqualify them somehow. Uh, but of course, since you're asking them about the background and the company, you say, well, golly gee, Willikers, Bob, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, but do you use recruiters there? Granted, I'm paraphrasing it, but it is really clunky. It's a, it's a, it's a bait and switch. Don't like it. I don't like, I don't like having to lie. Um, but using that same sort of, um, um, not technique, but same sort of uh, theory, right? Where a decision maker is more likely to get on the phone with you if you have a little carrot you can wave in front of their face, which is helping them in their own leadership career. So given the way the market is and given the way that people typically are, um, oh, here's, uh, thank you, Michael G. Cox. Um, given the way that people are about worried, right? Whether or not they've lost their job or not, but they're worried about it. They're worried about their own career prospects messaging decision makers and just simply saying something to the effect of as a high level headhunter, I work with people at your level and above. If you're looking to get into the c suite or, or uh, if you're looking for headhunter that could be your eyes and ears out there in the marketplace confidentially, let's have a quick conversation uh, and, and talk about it. You don't have to lie and say you have a position that you don't. Mm -hmm. um, you may not get as many calls, but it's better to be truthful because when you bait and switch somebody, you you lose their trust and they're not gonna they're not going to buy right, from you. David, if I can add, that's what I always loved yeah. about Peter Lefkowitz mm -hmm. and his training, right on the Morgan method. That it wasn't any of the ruses there. It was his thing was really, and that's the exact words too. Was listen, hey, you know, he would just come on the angle. I was referred to. I heard amazing things about you. Don't know who I am. Give me a call. They always call you back and they say, listen, let me take the mystery out of the call. This person said you were great. I understand you've been running all these things with this company. I'm a recruiter. I do this. Amazing. You're the kind of guy I want to talk to. How do you feel about being kept abreast? That's it. It's a great call. They call you back always because it's crypto. I love that, David. Right. And it's great because any of that ruse stuff is no one wants to do that. You know? It's worked well for me, too, with the way you're describing it, David, where yeah. basically like especially in my case, because I hire for a lot of leadership positions, it's easier. And it's like, in, you know, it's easier for me to do that. And I do it more volume. And it's nice because they're either going to be a decision maker or a candidate. Uh, but I take the same kind of approach, which is like, hey, you know, I place a fair amount of CFOs each year. You know, I came across profile, you know, and then they kind of, and of course I do it better when I'm writing it out than when I'm thinking about the fly on a live call, but, <laughs> but I'll basically take that approach of like, you know, uh, you know, let's talk, you know, let's talk about like what your next step in your career looks like, you know, perhaps I can help you, et cetera. And, you know, some of them will bite and you might have something that you could potentially you know, use as a door opener at other potential clients, like best case, you know, best two best cases scenarios, either you have someone who's, who's sort of sees your professionalism, I think is the important part here is they, you don't do the ruse. You just, it's a, it's a genuine call. They see how you handle them as a candidate. And they're like, I want that kind of service yeah. for someone who recruits from me because you're auditioning for the job That's when you right. do that phone That's call. Right. So right. if they, now, 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 actually, Chris, along with that, is, I, I didn't mean to cut you out there. Go ahead. But I, I just want to make sure I put a pin in that because I want to come back to that in a second. Go ahead. Sorry about that. But I want to make sure I put a pin in that because that's a very okay. important point you brought, you brought up. Oh, All right. So I, I wanna, I'm going I'm to Go comment ahead. about that. <laughs> um, so that's <laughs> our I was like, I mean, the pin's in. What it talk. No, I want to come so basically, back to it. Pin means I'll basically pin it at the top. We'll come back to it later. Anyway, keep going. Well, all right. Well, I will say this. So, so Chris, actually, it's a very, it's a very good point. It's the the way the way you conduct the call is indicative of how you'll work with them in the future. And and so, um, and so, the, the, so this actually by by screening the person you're talking to, um, what it does is it opens up a. Well, it shows shows them you know, the the quality work that you do and and the type of screening that you do with candidates. Uh, and you're not there to glad hand anybody. Two, it's the perfect segue to for the flip. Because remember what I said before about the other part of that that I don't like, not just the lying part, but the bait and switch. The golly gee, Willikers, Bob, baby, we're missed if I didn't ask, but do you use recruiters there? Oh, like it's cringy. Uh, and so how do you flip it with some nuance and have it make sense? So one of the things that I love to do in these calls 
Um, and this, by the way, is something that I developed many, many years ago in my own practice. And just over the years, I've just developed the, the scripts and the, and the flow, et cetera. Um, so uh, what I like to do, what, I, what they have noticed is that I, I can talk to, back when I was recruiting SAP, I can talk to a VP of IT and I might talk to them for a couple of minutes about my service, uh, but they're always a bit uh, uh, standoffish because look, you're trying to sell them something right at the end of the day, even if you're just networking at the end of the day, they know you have a service, you want to get their business and no one likes to be sold to. And that's, there's always a bit of standoffishness there, but the moment the frame is, 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 is turned around where now they're talking to you about their own career and you're in that, I guess you can say that power position, if you will, they they open up. All right, all right. Imagine the conversations you've had with leadership candidates when you've got their, their resume in front of you and they'll answer questions that they would never in a million years even yeah. consider answering if you were just if you reached out to them on a sales call, right? Well, they'll open up so, to you about all sorts of organizational challenges they're having, mm -hmm. et cetera, which their you know, salary, their bonus, their personal issues, their mortgage, all this stuff. You can cr crack them open. Cr cr you can crack them. I, I, I call it cracking them open. But here, yeah. here's how you really crack them open, right? Um, because even on those calls, especially for younger recruiters, young bucks out there, young bloods, as they as they call them, um, the uh, you, you tend to glad hand because you're just happy to be on the phone with a VP. And so you're asking softball questions. Um, not every VP you talk to or director you talk to is good. Like there, there, there's, there, there's average for a reason because most people are average. There's not many A players and top performers out there. So what I always like to do is, is just like you with a candidate, what sets you apart from everybody else? Like, you know, uh, something quantifiable that nobody else can say, what's your feather in your cap, whatever it is, but what separates you from all the other <laughs> leaders that I talk to every single week? And I talk to 10 of you, not that you would say that, but I'm paraphrasing here and, and, and let them answer. And here's what you do when you can push back on them a little bit, right? So, well, I, I hear you, Bob, but I hear that quite often. Is there anything else? Get more specific. What about the numbers, right? You kind of put them back on the heels a little bit, again, with nuance and professionalism, they tend to open up more. And the really cool thing about that is consider that the uh, number one determinant, determinant of leadership success is their ability to hire and retain a top performing team. That for any leader, that is their number one goal or their, or their, or their, their number one mission, right? right. So- if you can, if if you're pushing back and they're having trouble answering, or or as you're answering about what sets them apart, it's an easy segue to, well, you know, Bob, as you know, the number one determinant of any leader is really the their ability to hire and retain a top performing team. So let me ask you, what's your recruiting philosophy? How do you recruit? Do you have any issues? Like, and, and it, it leads you into conversation. We could talk about some of their gastric issues issues when it comes to recruiting. Let's see where I'm going with this. And that's a great way to segue into, well, Bob, this wasn't the purpose of this call right now, but but there, there may be some issues where I can certainly help with that. Look, happy to set up an, a call on another, on an, uh, set up another call. So it doesn't seem like a bait and switch either way. Uh, I, I can help you as much as I can, if I can, uh, or sorry, I, I chopped it up here. Uh, we can talk about your situation or some of the issues that you've had. If I can help, I can tell you exactly how, and if I can't, I can get you pointed in the right direction. So again, you're not trying to oversell it, but it's a great way, you know, by screening them heavily, provides the best opportunity to actually, with some nuance, segue into a sales call without it being a big clunky flip, right? So yeah, although I would- The way I, I approach it. I would, the only thing I would differ on there is I think I wouldn't say, oh, that wasn't the purpose of this call because I feel like that's still a little bit misleading because then it's like, almost sounds like, oh, that wasn't what I called you for when it's like what I called you for. But I think when you're, when you're having someone lay out their approach to how they build their teams. And as you're hearing where some of the gaps are or some of the, the challenges, you know, I think it's perfectly okay to say, you know, I, I deal with challenges like that all the time. Like, it sounds like you've got this pretty down pat, obviously you wouldn't be where you are if you weren't able to build effective teams, but it does sound like there's a couple areas where, where maybe, you know, you could use somebody like me, you know, we could explore that further if you're interested. I, that That's just, it's a new, it's, stylistic choice want, but, yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody navigates that differently but i think yeah. that the, the bottom line is the same well, well the, the the reason why i say it like that is because i like to I like to separate it as, and get, okay. get kind of like a wall in between so be able sure. to say I even go to so far so let's we can talk about it on a different call um yeah. right because it, it it shows that you're you're kind of like it's almost like um you're like still being focused on example, them like the, yeah. yeah you can push them away a little bit 
but you're not I, you're, um, you're trying not to pull them in. You push them away. Can a I move bit. off the leadership call? I want to get back to your main topic that you were asking about yeah. the recession stuff. All right. And oh, yeah. I'm talking about that. All right. So anyway, so so that said, the one thing I want to want to add in there, by the way, real quick, uh, and not to, not to uh, not to push this, but if anybody is interested in learning how to do them, I actually have two resources: one free, and what's not. Uh, I've got a sales and marketing guide. You can go to realdsp.me forward slash guide. Uh, it's a 220 page sales and marketing guide in there. There's a section on leadership calls with actual real questions to ask during those calls. Or if you want to get some actual real training on it, my full course, it's realdsp.me forward slash leadership. So anyway, with that said, Neil, sorry for that. I want to do my I little I want uh, intro. Time. It's a great topic, you know, with the yeah. recession, slow down, whatever we want to call it. And the leadership calls a great angle. I want to just come back and, and answer your question and your topic on, on some things that you both said and really put it together. And I think the answer for me, my opinion, is leverage, okay? Leverage. And that's what I want us to think about. How will you leverage everything, your relationships, your database, what you have, for the future it's a question you always have to ask in business so what's your answer to leverage now in lots of ways you can do it david are you talking about how do you leverage your existing client relationship david gave an example i deal with it i'm dealing with with with, with the sap this person's dealing with finance let me leverage this start making more from something get that right that's smart it's 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 creating something from something that exists how do you take a perm candidate that's unemployed and get money on a consulting gig Listen, I'm a temp guy now, a contract guy now. You're going to hear it all the time. It's going to be my theme. I don't care if you get into contracts so that you'll use boss, back off the staffing solutions.com. Seriously, it doesn't matter. It's it, it could be anything. How are you going to leverage into a different segment, into a different sector, into a different vertical? How are you going to leverage the technology? And I'm going to say leverage, and I'm going to leave this as a whole separate conversation. But if your plans to continue to do what you've been doing, you already see how things have changed markedly post COVID, right? The massive boom we had post COVID was for obvious reasons. We don't know about them, right? It was the move to virtual work, all the change of the, the, the commercial, all that, the, the virtual meetings, uh, the demand for talent and IT and things like healthcare, right? Crazy, crazy demand. Do you think in our world of technology, and the way everything's changing so fast and so virtually, so quickly in the last, in this growth period we just had, do you think a virtual, uh, 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 a manual middleman is going to exist? How many of you are manual middlemen out there? And you're, I'm telling you, I've never been one to fear, oh, it's going to be the end of recruiting with MSPs, end of recruiting with in-house temps. Oh, end of, okay. End of recruiting when they- No offense to any Manuels out there. What's that? No offense to any Manuels out there. Uh, right, right, right. So I'm saying, like, it, it's, um, I just lost my train of thought on that. Sorry. Right. That's what he was Sorry. Just trying to do. No, I, exactly. Exactly. No, but so I'm saying it's like, it, it, it's, there's no room you need to automate. We're, and we're going to get into, we're going to have a great session in two weeks on artificial intelligence. Stay tuned for that one. It's going to be a great one. But what's your plan? What you, you can't be a manual person in an automated future, and it's accelerated. That's my answer, and kind of puts together a lot that we've all said. And, it's, and it's, speaking of automation, you know, uh, look at AI, for example. Uh, when it comes to AI, even just for content generation, whether you're writing blogs, social media posts, et cetera, um, uh, you know, if you know, I know a lot of people use AI and it's it's comes out very generic, but if you do it right, it comes out really, really good. Um, but I will say this it's uh, for those who who poo poo it, uh, think of it like a calculator, right? Mathematicians use calculators, it helps them do higher level math easier, so they don't have to, they're not, they're not uh, uh, wasting their time doing low level calculation. AI, same thing, it's just a simple tool that you can use, much like a calculator for a mathematician, it's a calculator for. I guess, content generation and for recruiters as well. So anyway, I just want to throw that in there, but it's going to be yeah, a great yeah. show next week. And, and um, we'll give a plug to David. Check out his stuff because David's helped me and my company personally as a consultant with his products and his uh, automation tools. Uh, I mean, his personas, like plug that in, in two weeks. It's amazing. Uh, thank you. And, um, uh, and and also, if you do want to get into temp, it's a book for any of you watching this. You want to download the contract and business and learn a period. It's uh, if you just want to put it up there, it's backofficestaffingsolutions.com forward slash staffing. <laughs> uh, forward oh, wait a minute. I, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. There it is. Yeah. Forward oh, slash. 
I've got Stop. a comment up there. Sorry, <laughs> I met, I messed it up, guys. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Back off the staff is a cup where it's on staff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so by the way, Neil, so to wrap this up, um, I know that um, we're kind of running short on time, but uh, are there any um, any automation tools that you would recommend, either either a specific tool or just in general, maybe some things that people should be automating in their practices? Oh my word! That's a seriously, it's a whole. Yeah, that's, a whole topic. that's a whole show. No, it's a great question. In fact, yeah. let's make that a new one. Maybe next week it's a good one too, because yeah, Chris one. is on vacation next week, and and there's so much, David. Yeah, let's 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 continue. There's, and and you have the you have amazing automation. Yeah, let's talk tech stack with it. And there's always it's always such a popular topic. I love that. Well, and it, and we'll yeah. Well, well, well Zale, I will say, so Zale here had a comment. Uh, automation is blocking people in Canada's minds. Human touch is coming back. Uh, at least I have seen better results at this point. And actually, Zale, you're actually right about that. You see, Get it's on. automation. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, earlier, it's, David. Yeah, it's, it's automation used poorly that is the issue. Um because you can actually use automation uh, the right way and actually use a bit of a manual touch. And that, actually, we were just talking about this before the call, uh, thinking of ideas for, for future shows. And one of the ideas I had at the time was when old school becomes the new school. Because when the new school, when everybody's automating, then adding a manual touch and a human touch of things actually oh my God. Uh, must helps your automation be better. And understanding how to blend effectively yeah, I love that the best of both. given that thing it's perfect timing I, it's almost yeah. like david that was you i feel like that was fake we're all taking like notes here on future to topics because a lot of this you stuff is you could talk about for an hour there. you totally planted that well well that said guys i think we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up this show here i think we're about six minutes down from the uh from the hour um uh, but a quick little promo here before we end guys if you're watching this uh if you watch this live do me a favor comment live in the comments wherever you're watching whether it be on linkedin YouTube, uh, our two Facebook groups, the Headhunter and Executive Recruiter Community, and the Independent Recruiters, and uh, it's called URSA, the Independent Recruiters and um, uh, uh, Staffing. How, how to go? Uh, uh, Independent the, the Recruiters, of... Staffing Agencies, and Headhunters. Sorry, but yeah, I always met, mess up that, that title. Because it's the stupidest uh, acronym ever known to man. Yeah. Right? Ursa. It's but, like URSA, but with an H at the end. So it's not. Right. Because right. we left out headhunters and we didn't want to ignore them. So we had, but URSA still worked with an H at URSA. <laughs> and soon, and soon, this is going to be turned into a podcast. So we'll, we'll be on uh, Spotify and all the other uh, uh, podcast platforms as well. Probably in a couple of weeks, we'll be uploading to the, those platforms also. So make sure stay, stay, stay touched and stay tuned. And in addition, one more thing as well, if anybody wants to watch the show on our training application, so it's called the Pocket Headhunter. I don't have a link for you right here, but um, I'll drop a link in both Ursa and the Herc group as well as the co in the comments on on the LinkedIn Live, the YouTube Live. Uh, and I've got a lot of free training on there. It's a mobile app. And all the uh, all of our old Headhunters and Boxer Talk and Smack shows are on there, and all the new shows will be on there as well, okay? Um, and then one last thing, guys, if you're watching the replay, type in a replay as well, please. Uh, much, much appreciated. Um, Chris, sir, first show, any last words? No, I'm, I'm sorry get one we'll be able to be here next week, but I'll have a lot more to say when I get back, so – Awesome. Awesome. How about you, Neil? What about you? Any last words? Anything you want to uh, leave with? Emmanuel 40, Emmanuel 40, Emmanuel 40. Since he told us to keep uh, his name out of our mouths, I just figured I'd throw it in there. One no, Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, no, it was great, great time uh, uh, being back with you all and uh, look forward to, um, yeah, lots of great conversations. And um, we actually prepared a bunch of things we didn't get to today, um, which we'll get to uh, next week and the week after. Mm -hmm. Scouring, we're, you know, you'll see, we're going to scour the web. We're going to show you videos. We're going to be talking about them, uh, uh, commenting. Uh, we're going to show you different posts. There's been some great things now about the recession, the slowdown, what's happening. And we'll talk about that. Uh, what's happening in IT, healthcare, light industrial. All right, so stay tuned. Thank you. And don't worry, we'll still have our older reverence. We'll be a little bit cleaner. But just yeah. as funny. Hey, and David, I need a replay link in Ursa that doesn't drive to your group. People can't get in there. So if you can get me some on YouTube or something web based that we can post ASAP, please, because I have a lot of people still very upset. Yeah, it'll be the, it'll, be, it'll be the YouTube channel. So all right. So and by the way, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be great, David. The first show <laughs> always happens. Yeah. We'll, we'll get a fix. Always I'll, I'll, Always I'll drop happens. the YouTube uh, link in the earth so you guys can watch the replay there and subscribe okay. while you are at it. All right, guys. And uh, one last thing. Um, so the next two shows, next show, next Thursday at 1 p.m., we're going to be talking about um, automation. 
And we're also going to be talking about some old school techniques that can make your automation even better. And then in two weeks, we'll be talking about artificial intelligence, AI, the rise of the machines. And hopefully, hopefully, and I want to say this just in case I fully support our future uh, uh, sentient overlords. AI overlords. <laughs> I just want to make sure I get that on record in case I for, becomes you have to sentient. you have to get the Simpsons quote right. I for one welcome our AI overlords. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Thank you, everybody. Well. Great first show. Love you all. Peace yeah. out, everybody. Bye.